somehow the very notion of space, time, and geometry is approximate, or as people say, emergent. Emergent from what? Nobody knows. It depends on the specific model or the specific formalism we work on. But the striking fact is that even approaches that uh, didn't start by uh, postulating or uh, imagining new degrees of freedom, new fundamental structures uh, of the world that are not of a spatio-temporal type, end up identifying structures that are not uh, spatio-temporal in the usual sense. Once you take this uh, uh, mindset that uh, space-time is to emerge from the atoms of space described by such a peculiar quantum field theory, in the same sense in which condensed matter systems uh, emerge, uh, can be described microscopically from the knowledge of the atomic interactions or molecular interactions in some cases, then the question becomes, okay, but then in, in your theory, if that is really true, space-time is what type of condensed matter system? Is it a liquid? Is it a solid? Is it some much more peculiar phase of matter? Uh, of course, it's not going to be matter, but uh, some much more abstract entity. Some condensed matter systems will just not exist as possible phases of matter, for example, if not for the underlying quantum properties. And the, the obvious example would be superfluids, that is quantum liquids. Suppose that you are a very unlucky fish swimming on a superfluid, assuming that was possible because they're usually very cold. And, well, you will experience superfluidity. You know, the fact that, you know, that there is absence of viscosity or things like this. Or you will, you will experience, unfortunately, also vortices in the superfluid. And clearly, those are macroscopic properties that a fish could, in principle, experience. However, we know now that those macroscopic properties not only can be derived from the knowledge of the atomic theory, but would not be there if the atomic theory was not a quantum theory. So we are asking ourselves whether the same can be true for space-time, for the universe. Maybe some properties that we attribute to classical physics because we say they are macroscopic features of the universe are really uh, due to underlying quantum properties of the constituents of space. Uh, and again, this may sound paradoxical because we're used to think in terms of uh, microscopic scales, macroscopic scales, there are phenomena like, uh, I don't know, the cosmological constant uh, or, uh, you know, the large-scale dynamic of the universe, which have nothing to do with the microscopic features of, uh, of particles or of uh, gravitation itself. But we, one has to realize that uh, in making all these statements, we are relying blindly on uh, the conventional wisdom of effective field theory. Exactly the type of physics that is valid as long as uh, space-time has uh, classical properties, a given geometry, and so on. But if all of those are emergent notions from something more fundamental, the very moment you think of uh, space-time itself as being emergent from something more fundamental, then there's no a priori reason to think that uh, what looks like a macroscopic phenomenon from the point of view of observers living on that space-time at macroscopic, at the emergent level, will not really be originated from uh, microphysics, from microscopic quantum properties of the underlying uh, atoms of space. The cosmological constant, which we normally understand as a typical large-scale feature of the universe, uh, really originated from some underlying uh, quantum gravity mechanism. If there is a, a geometric spatio-temporal phase, possibly associated with something like a condensate, and there is another phase which is non-geometric, because somehow it lacks the possibility of being described in terms of geometry, space, time, and the usual uh, notions we apply to in uh, macroscopic physics, in general relativity and quantum field theory, then uh, what is the transition? Is it a physical process? Is it something that happened somehow in the universe? On the one hand, you say, ah, ha, of course, it has to be what replaces the Big Bang singularity in cosmology. 
So if I have the full theory of quantum gravity, and everybody secretly believes uh, it has the full theory of quantum gravity on his desk, then uh, uh, I will be able to describe uh, the cosmological evolution down to the very, very early universe, and where general relativity tells me I'm supposed to find a singularity, I will instead find something like a phase transition to a new phase. We are talking about a physical process that uh, almost by definition does not happen in time. Because it, we are connecting a, a phase where the notion of time somehow has to make sense up to the transition, and then cease to make sense. So what is the physics of the other phase? It's not spatiotemporal, the fundamental microscopic level of the atoms of space, and it's not spatiotemporal at the macroscopic regime either. So more questions? <laughs>